Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. Um, I want to talk this week about a tool in my Brightline Eating toolbox that has been super helpful for me. And that tool is weighing and measuring without exception. In other words, bringing my scale into restaurants or to parties or wherever. Um, so let me give you some background about why this is sort of a new thing for me, why I didn't do this right from the beginning. Um, when I first started eating this way, uh, which was in 2003, when I joined a 12-step program for food addiction, I'd already been in 12-step programs for food. I'd been going to meetings for a long, long time, but it wasn't really working for me. And then I joined another group, another uh, subgroup within the sort of whole 12-step food movement. And these folks were really, you know, pretty rigorous about no sugar, no flour, um, eating only meals and bounding their quantities with a digital food scale. So this was really the first time that I learned to use a digital food scale. And it was an amazingly powerful tool for me because I'm a quantities girl. Like I will eat too much food. Even if it's not sugar or flour, I will just eat too much. I will eat more food than my body needs and stay heavy. Um, so they taught me how to use a digital food scale at home um, and use it precisely. So if I was supposed to weigh four ounces of protein, it would be 4.0, not 4.1, not 3.9. You know, if I had to pinch off a little bit of flesh or put it, you know, put a little bit more on or whatever, if I had to put an extra pea on the plate to get it to exactly six ounces of vegetables, that's what I had to do. So um, at home, I learned how to be really, really rigorously, perfectly honest with my food, with my scale. Then what they told me to do was to eyeball my quantities when I went out to restaurants. Well, first of all, they said, don't eat out for a little while um, to get sort of your bearings and, you know, sort of look at your quantities at home. And then when you go out to eat, eyeball your quantities and try to do your best to make them like you have at home. So, you know, if you go to a steakhouse and you're having steak and vegetable and salad for your meal, that means that when the steak arrives, it's probably going to be too big. And when the vegetables arrive, they're going to be too small. And when the salad arrives, it's going to be too small. Let that go. But in terms of the steak, you know, say a prayer, look at it, make a cut in the meat, take what's not, what you're not going to eat off the plate and put it on a side plate, like on a butter plate, and then leave what you think is four ounces. And then at that point, let it go. Just surrender. Just trust that it's right. It's perfect. It's fine. And eat your meal. So I did that. And it worked for me for years. But then some, <laughs> look at me like the, <laughs> my food addiction is really sneaky. My saboteur, it's, it's certifiable. So what, what started to happen was I noticed at home that I would be weighing my food and sometimes I'd be thinking, like, that's a lot of food. Like, really, I get more broccoli? And I'm waiting for it to get to six ounces. No, it's four ounces. I'm putting more broccoli, more broccoli, more broccoli. It looks like a mound of broccoli. And other times, I'm putting on my vegetables, and it's like, oh, that's all I get? I would have thought I would get more. But no, that's all I get. So, I mean, now, broccoli is a special case. If you've ever weighed out broccoli, you know it, it's voluminous. But, but I guess what I'm saying is, even after years weighing my food at home, sometimes I would be surprised. Sometimes I would look at my food and think, that looks like a lot. And other times I would look and go, why does that look so small today? And so what that did was it created this, um, this, I don't know what to call it, like this wiggle room, I guess, for my saboteur. Because I'd be in a restaurant and I'd think, well, that looks like a lot but sometimes it looks like a lot, you know? Um, sometimes four ounces looks like a lot. Sometimes it looks like a little, I guess. Maybe this could be four ounces. It looks like a lot, but it could be four ounces. But there was like a, another part inside of me that kind of knew it's probably not four ounces. That's probably more than four ounces. And so, but it's true. Sometimes it looks like a lot. So it could be. There was always a part of that I thought, well, it could be four ounces. So <laughs> that created like, I was, I was like, always willing to go with the slightly larger estimate. And then somehow over the years, I was willing to go with the larger estimate of the larger estimate. And then maybe the larger estimate of the larger estimate of the larger estimate. Somehow, like, it seemed like my quantities in restaurants started just getting too big. And along the way, I feel like I lost the ability to be really honest in restaurants. Um, now, I, I remember through the years finding 
tricks where I could sort of pull myself back in. One of the tricks that I used, and this is a tool that I shared because it worked for me. It only worked for me for a little while, but it worked for me to imagine myself in a food weighing contest. I know that sounds funny, but like sort of like at the state fair where there's a jar of jelly beans and you got to guess how many jelly beans are in the jar, right? And you're you're not faking, you're like really trying to guess how many jelly beans are in the jar. So I, I would imagine that I showed up at the county fair and they were saying, we're having a weighing and measuring food contest. Who can, who can be the closest to guess four ounces of chicken, six ounces of broccoli, and eight ounces of salad? And I'd be like, oh my God, I sh I'm really good at that. I could totally win that contest. And I would go and I would, under those circumstances, I'm so competitive, right? I would totally be spot on with my guesses. So I would imagine that in the restaurant and I would psych myself into actually shedding those notions of, you know, it's a bigger four ounces, it's a smaller four ounces. I was like, no, I'm not looking for the big ounce, the big four ounces or the small four ounces. I'm looking for the four ounces. Like really and honestly, truly, this is my submission to the contest. Um, and I think what happened is to drop into the space of that that visualization, that fantasy, I didn't always have it in me because I have three little kids. So I'm in a restaurant with my husband and the kids and, you know, Zoe, st stop pulling your sister's hair and, you know, Maya, you know, get off from up from out of the floor. Don't eat that thing you just found on the floor. Like restaurants are not really uh, a, a peaceful place for me. They're not a, a place that's conducive of being able to drop into that space of, you know, really accessing that truest part of me that could, judge fairly. So in the hurly burly of the restaurant experience, I was frequently going, yeah, that's, that's close. We'll just call, we'll call that four ounces. That's close enough. And so I feel, I felt like over the years I got separated from my honest self in restaurants. And it was very frustrating for me because I'm an incredibly honest person. Like I'm, you know, well, you see me on these vlogs, like, right. I mean, I, I can't, yeah, I don't, I don't really let myself get away with anything. I've got this, like, this siren that goes off in the back of my mind. Woo, woo, woo. And I've got this, like, this conscience cop that pulls me over and says, you weren't really honest there. Like, that's, you know, and, um, whether it's that, you know, I didn't say something to someone that I really should have probably let them know about or what, like, I don't let myself get away with anything. So this, this issue of dishonesty in restaurants, it was like a niggling thing. It was driving me crazy. So, Finally, I'm like, why don't I just weigh my food in restaurants? And I think it was, honestly, it was, um, it, it arose out of my need for an additional tool to support myself through the intensity of what my life is growing this bright line eating movement. My life has become busier and more intense than anything I ever experienced. I mean, I had a busy, intense life before as a full-time tenured college professor, assistant chair of the psychology department with three little kids and all the years that I was working toward getting tenure for sure, those were incredibly busy years. Uh, so it's not like I was any stranger to an intense life. I had a busy life before, but I, have never before experienced what it's like now um, with mainly with so many pulls to my attention. And I, you know, I love the people that I serve so much that that when they reach out to me, you know, like I, I, I try to reach back like I try to connect with people and I have a team now of 25 and and um, when they have questions around their work that they need me to weigh in on things often at the end of the day, we'll have gotten the kids to bed. I will have recorded videos or whatever it was that I had to do that day. All of the podcast interviews and the all the stuff I'm doing all day long and then I get to the end of the day and I still on my phone I have Voxer messages from you know several team members who need me to weigh in on things and then I've got to post in my Bright Lifers group and then I've got to take care of my own nightly checklist sheet and my own stuff for my own Bright Line Eating program. My husband always says you know it takes you two hours to go to bed. I mean he's kidding it doesn't take two hours but it takes an hour or, or even a little more. Sometimes it takes an hour and 15 minutes for me just to go to bed because there's all these things I have to do at the end of the day to close down the day appropriately. And when I look at my phone and there's a bunch of things there, well, you know, if I don't do them now, they just start the day tomorrow. So anyway, in that climate, the willpower depletion, the willpower gap that I experience from decision fatigue because people are asking me to make decisions. Susan, what should we do about this? Susan, this is what I did. Is that okay? Susan, you know, when are we going to get the thing thing done? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm making judgment calls all day long and I'm experiencing in my life the incredible depletion of decision fatigue. It's a willpower stressor. 
So I'm showing up to restaurants with nothing in my tank to make an honest call. Like I don't even have, like I, it's hard to explain the feeling, but you probably know it. You might have it on a Friday night after a long work week, sitting in traffic, getting home. And like someone asks you, you know, honey, when are we going to pay this bill? And it's like, don't even ask me to make, I can't even think about that right now. That feeling of like, I can't even make one more decision, you know? Um, so I get to a restaurant and I had nothing. And so now I'm carrying my scale with me and I just pull out my scale. I, I ask for a second plate. So I say, can I have another, another plate? And they just bring me another plate. So I put my plate on the scale and I just put the food on this other plate and I weigh it out to the amount that I'm supposed to eat that's on my food plan. Oh, what a relief. <laughs> you know, I know that for a lot of people, weighing food in a restaurant would be incredibly stressful. It would be not what they want to do at all. And if it doesn't sound like a fit for you, don't do it. <laughs> what I have found lately is it is so helpful. It is so freeing. Um, and so I want to offer this as a tool to anyone who's, you know, maybe fresh out of the boot camp. We just had like 2,000 people graduate from this, um, this big boot camp that we just did, the Food Freedom 2016 boot camp. Um, so if you're a recent boot camp graduate and you're about to go on a holiday or you're dealing with all of the holiday parties that are happening right now, like this is a good time, especially for a party where the food is going to be appetizers going around and maybe there are things you can eat. Maybe they're going to have carrot sticks with hummus. Like maybe there's things you can eat there, but when they're coming around in little tiny bits, you know, the food addict in me goes like, well, when's enough of those? Like those are, you know, I don't even know what is that one ounce? Is that an ounce and a half? Is that two ounces? Well, that's a big difference. Like if it's one ounce, then I get 14 of them. If that's my dinner vegetable, if that's two ounces, I only get seven of them. And who, who can keep track of the count anyway? When you have a scale, all of a sudden that becomes a much simpler thing. And for me, when I go to a party, I like to focus on the people. I don't want to be thinking about my food. And I hate that I have this brain that's certifiable that like, you know, the reality is if I don't deal with my food, that's what I'm going to be thinking about. I'm going to be thinking, do I get any more? Do I get any more? Can I have some more? You know, have I had enough? Oh, there's blah, 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 blah. If I just make my food handled where I just, I weighed it out. I know how much I got. I got the right amount. And now I'm freed up to be comfortable in my skin, to be talking with the people, to be of service, to be focusing on gratitude, to enjoy the surroundings, to start some great conversation. It's a really nice option. So yeah, if you want to know what digital food scale I recommend for travel, it's the same one that's on my website. You can go to SusanPierceThompson.com under the resources tab and there's an OXO is the brand name. I don't some people try to pronounce that like it's OXO, maybe, I don't know. I just say the letters, OXO, whatever. I don't know if that's pronounceable. But anyway, that's the brand name. And they have a big one that's silver that like weighs up, I think, to 11 pounds capacity total. And the one for travel that I use weighs up to five pounds capacity travel. And it's um, it's uh, black. It's all black. And it's got a pull out face display. This is a critical feature because if you're going to go to a restaurant, you're going to ask for an extra salad bowl. For example, if you, if you order a dinner salad, for example, and it comes in like, you can picture the, the plate bowl, platey bowl thing, right? That it's like got a dish here and then it's got a, a rim around it. You put that on any normal scale. You're not going to be able to read what the number says. So this OXO scale, even though it's a small one, small enough to fit in any moderate size, little purse or fanny pack or little backpack or anything, um, it's small, but it has a pull out face display. So you can put any size large dinner plate or large salad bowl on it and pull out the face display and read, read the number on it. So that's the one I recommend for travel. It's my favorite one. Um, and yeah, that's my, that's my suggestion, you know? So I know there's people who are watching who've never done a boot camp. They don't even know how many ounces they would get of this or that or whatever. Don't worry about it then. Um, you know, I keep eyeballing your quantities. It's fine. Um, but if, you know, you're, you're doing bright line eating and you're weighing your food and you're skittish about going out to restaurants because you don't know how it's going to go, bring your scale and you'll find, wow, it's just like eating at home actually. Um, or if you're going to be going into parties and, you know, there's going to be food all night long and you're worried about kind of losing track of how much you've eaten and, you know, going home, rethinking the food. For me, that's, 
that's the cardinal sign. If I'm thinking about what I've eaten as I'm driving home, it means that something went off and I need to assess what happened so I can learn for next time and maybe make a modification, maybe make an adjustment to how I handled it. When I handled my food well, I'm driving home and I'm not thinking about the, or I'm going to bed that night and I'm not thinking about what I ate there. It's just not even on my mind. It was a completely clean and clear and free meal. So that's, that's what I'm doing these days. I'm weighing and measuring without exception. Oh, one last thing I want to share about that is, um, that 12 step program I was in, they didn't do that. They, they did not weigh their food in restaurants, but there are, I think, seven or eight 12 step food programs, different ones. And of them, I believe at least two weigh and measure in restaurants always. Like they have their culture is we weigh and measure without exception. And so what that tells me is as these different 12-step programs broke off of Overeaters Anonymous, which was the original one, people broke off because they found when OA, um, back, it, back decades and decades and decades ago, Overeaters Anonymous um, let go of all uh, consensus around sticking with no sugar, no flour, no wheat, uh, weighing and measuring, nothing. They let their members decide on their own individually what they were gonna do for their food plan. Even if they were gonna do Weight Watchers, it didn't matter. They could do anything or nothing for their food plan and Overeaters Anonymous became just a support group around working the 12 steps, letting each individual decide for themselves. There were a lot of people who felt that didn't provide enough structure for them. And they, over the decades, different 12-step programs cropped up out of that original foundation, formed their own groups. And at least two of them weigh and measure without exception, which tells me there are hundreds of people like me who found that they have a lot more freedom when they weigh and measure always. Not try to eyeball their portions in restaurants, because there's people like me who, you know, as honest as I am, I will, I will game myself. I will game the system and I will eat more food in a restaurant. I just will. I know myself well enough to know. I've watched myself do it enough times, you know, and if I want to let myself do that and I'm not gaining weight and it's not messing with my serenity, I don't actually think there's anything wrong with that. But if it is messing with my serenity or I am gaining weight and I'm, I'm not comfortable with that, then I need a solution. I need a, I need a, to implement a tool and this is one that's working for me. So. That's the weekly vlog, weighing and measuring without exception. And yeah, if you have something you want me to talk about on the weekly vlog, go ahead and send it in. I'm at susan at brightlineating.com. I'll see you next week.